hello in there so I just wanted to show you one of my favorite strength exercises that helps get underneath the arms here the tricep region and also uh, build some side body strength in particular like your serratus and um, some of the um, the, uh, the rotator cuff uh, muscles in particular especially if you start using some motions we'll come into to that in a second so I have two blocks which you may or may not want, or a rolled up blanket, or just anything that, you know, can go across your mat, perhaps like this, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. So even though I'm talking about uh, the benefits of <clears throat> um, these particular muscles here, you have to use your core for this. It's got to be engaged, because of course everything has, you know, everything kind of comes back to the center. So. If you haven't done some breathing exercises where you can feel how on the exhale there's this natural um, pulling back of the muscles and the lifting and extending of the low spine, you might want to do that. The exhale is in general a good place to go when you're making the most effort, especially um, well, and some of you might have learned that if you do weight training or, I mean, that's been something that's been taught to me for decades, but um, I know in yoga, sometimes you get taught to do, do this on an inhale and do this on an exhale. When you backbend, you inhale. And I think that there's an application for all of it, sure, but um, as you'll see here, we're going to use the exhale uh, in times of great effort. So it's going to be down dog and dolphin. So you have to be able to do both pretty well. So I would warm up with a few cat cows to start. And one of the reasons here why um, my belly is exposed is so you can see how I use it to, to do all this stuff. And um, you can't really see the muscles necessarily because I have a little bit of a Buddha belly, but, you'll, but maybe that's even better because you can actually see what's going on. So, little cat cow here, and then, you know, anything you need to do in particular, like if you need to stretch the backs of the shoulder blades, or if you need to go to one side or the other. So make sure that you know that there's all different ways to do this motion. So let's talk about different hand positions. This is going to be important, too. Notice I have my hands in front of my shoulders. This is for longevity in my practice, um, for wrist um, wrist flexion like this, it's, um, honestly, uh, sorry, wrist extension like this, they'll tell you mm, about 70 degrees is about healthy. I mean, everybody's structure is different. I can go way past that, but I don't think I want to be there forever. So I like to keep it to um, something uh, that's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more manageable. So that's one thing. Secondly, I like to have the hands slightly turned out. Now this may not be right for you, okay? So if you have if you have this angle in your arms, and it's funny because my arms do different things. I'm not trying to pull my arms to my side, I'm just letting them come out. So you'll notice when I have my arms, um, my hands supinated, the forearm supinated like this, that I got one arm that goes out like a little bit more, this one, right? And this is called a carrying angle in the arms, and mine's not too severe. Some people, you'll see, like, I'm, th their arms will actually go way out like this. So because I have a little bit of a carrying angle, I take the hands a little bit wider than my shoulders, and I turn my hands out. And this has worked for me for years for shoulder health, but remember, everybody's a little bit different. But it's something to consider for you. And then the next thing I make sure is that my index knuckles don't pop up. What I really want is a ramp-like look and feel from the wrist down. So if you were rolling a marble, if you were like a little mouse, a living mouse trap, and you know, you were the last bit, and then you, the marble rolled down your arm, and then you had this pop up of the knuckles, then you would totally ruin the mouse trap. Like, so you've got to make sure that you have that ramp that goes down. Now there's certainly some formations in the bones and you know maybe some past injuries where you may you know you may have a different look to your wrists and fingers but in general we want to have a nice down slope from the wrist down to the fingertips so if you find yourself lifting that's a lot of stress on the wrists 
and uh, you're not really using the maximum ability of your um, your hands to get a nice pathway of weight. Okay, that was a weird motion. So from here, I like to take the cat pose and turn it into a dog. It's like like a magician trick. And then from here, if you can do dog, that's fine. You want to be able to do dolphin too. And the trick here is to be able to do dolphin with your forearms parallel. So dolphin's kind of a tricky posture if you don't do it a lot because we're not used to being on our forearms. And so for me, again, I know that I have wider hands when I'm in hand support, so I'm going to take wider elbows and forearms when I'm in forearm support. So I'm going to turn this forearm cat into a dolphin that's even more cray cray. And from here, I'm hugging the arms in energetically and then pretending like I'm sliding them back. Do you see the difference between just sort of hanging out, which is not necessarily inherently bad, but for what we're going to do, you're going to want to have that sense that everything's sliding in, the feet coming in towards the elbows, elbows coming in towards the feet, the core is working, the legs are working, I need a break. Okay. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. So if you're coming from Dolphin, this is where I recommend to start. I feel like this is the best place to start. If your elbows start going super wide, you're going to really be sacrificing like shoulder health. So you want to keep them in, and if you can't keep them in, then you need to probably practice this position more and maybe even do some things on your hands and knees rather than off your knees. So here I go. I'm going to lift one arm, and then I'm going to take a little, uh, like, a, like I'm opening a jar of jelly. So I'm sort of dialing my hand out. In this case, it's my left hand dialing uh, counterclockwise. And then I'll lift the core, and then I'll have this nice position here. Come back down to your knees. Now let's do it with the right hand first. So I turn the cat into a dolphin, and then... I'm going to use a little bend in the leg so I can access more of the core, lift the right elbow. There's a dialing of my right hand energetically that's going clockwise, and then exhale for the other arm. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is exhale up, and then have a little dialing in and a hugging and a sliding energetically of the elbows towards my feet, and more core work here, and then come up. Okay, so that's part one, two, and three. The next way to do this is to come down. So when you come down, I'll show you the left arm first because you'll see what tends to happen with the other arm that's not coming down, is you tend to have this buckling out. And I'm not saying that that's wrong or bad. I'm sure that there's an application to it. But I would invite you to try to dial that hand out externally so the elbow hugs in as you take the other one down. You come up and down, same thing, elbow down, elbow down. You can also dial them in, draw the belly in, have a little bend in the knees, and you take both elbows down, and then up. So there's multiple ways to do that, and I think there's a lot of benefit to it. I do it fairly regularly, and it's helped build some stability here. It's good if you have winging shoulders, shoulder blades, little wings back there. And the other application to it is you're able to work a little bit of pulling. You pull your arms back and you're pushing. And you're pulling down and you're pushing. So that way you get a nice uh, balance there of elements. It's not the ultimate pull. It's not like if I had a a rope or if I were doing blanket slides or chin-ups, but it, there is a pulling sensation and you don't need any real equipment to do it. So, last thing I'm going to show you here is if you need to bridge the gap, if you're like, hells no, I can't do that right now, then you can take a bolster, got my tea, I drink it through a straw because it's got lemon juice in it. I don't love using straws, so I try to reuse them over and over again because once you see a video of a tortoise getting a straw taken out of its nostrils you tend to think twice. So, 
So you can do it like this and come down so you have something to bridge the gap between your forearms and the floor. And this can be really, 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 in some ways, more challenging because blocks are a bit unstable even at their lowest setting. And then for those of you that need a little more support, wow, there's a lot of dog hair on that. My lint roller has a job when this video is done. Then you can work on, of course, now the squishiness factor helps you slide off a little bit more. And I think that that's really useful if you're working on strength. Of course, you can do this on your knees to an extent um, as well. So anyways, that's one of my little strength tricks. Hopefully you saw how the core had to be integrated there. Otherwise, it all goes up into the shoulders, and then you build all this cray-cray tension up here. It's the second time I use that expression. Sorry about that. It's not my favorite either. Um, so, <laughs> you don't want to build the tension. You're looking to build strength. You're working to build that mobility, because there is a bit of mobility there, and ideally nothing up here. Like, you should be able to talk normally like I was and go, <laughs> the whole time you're doing it, because that's how relaxed you are from the neck up. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more strength stuff, subscribe and like and do all that stuff that everybody tells you to do at the end of their video. Or, you know, leave a nice, respectful comment if you liked what you saw. If you have any criticisms, feel free to throw that in, too, because I like the voice of dissent. It challenges me and forces me to learn more. Never a bad thing. Okay, have a good one.